So hello everyone, my name is Nazlı and I work as a researcher at Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences. And uh, on behalf of my co-authors, I would like to present you a part of our concept development uh, for decision aid that we intended for people with dementia and their caregivers. Um, FIT is that the project is called FIT and it's a very big consortium and usually seeing this kind of images really out of context. I know they don't mean much for people who are not living in the country, but I wanted to show this because of one reason. Our consortium involved two different partners. So we had commercial partners who are actually developing products for people with dementia and we also have like a, uh, partners from care industry, like care homes, but also people who are doing in care. Uh, and both of these sites have like the same problem from different perspectives. So our role as design researchers was to bridge these two worlds. So the problem from the side of the commercial practice, there actually exists lots of solutions for dementia in the Dutch market especially. So lots of products and services offered from like uh, also the government and also private parties. But the problem is that these products and services are not being used or bought. So that was the problem from the commercial side. And when we come back to the care side, uh, the research shows that like, um, people with dementia have lots of problems, everyday problems, because of their brain is mainly affected in terms of their memory and also like time and space orientation, and their brain functioning deteriorates over time. People face lots of problems, and these problems affect their everyday life, social relations, well-being, etc. So they were like uh, really interested in answering these unmet needs. So our aim as in this project basically have this fit between needs and solutions. So we wanted to help people with dementia and their informal caregivers, first of all, to identify their needs and then find solutions that exist that can help to solve these needs. And so we wanted to do this through a digital platform. That was our role as design researchers. And in the long run, our aim was to like, improve well-being of people with dementia, keep their autonomy and independence, and help them to be able to live at home independently as much as possible in order to postpone their moving to a care home. So how we started, first of all, we did lots of uh, sessions with people with dementia and informal caregivers. We did in-depth interviews. We gave them diaries to like track their needs. We did some focus groups. And through this, like um, uh, all these sessions, we try to understand what is happening in their life and what kind of needs do they encounter. And we did also extensive analysis. I won't bore you in details with it, but just one thing I wanted to show, uh, which because really helped us to like craft our uh, design at the end, there are three different types of behaviors of our target group. So first of all, there are a group of users who they are not even aware that they are experiencing some problems or they have unmet needs. Sorry. Um, there are also second type of target group. They are aware that they are experiencing some problems, but they don't conceive that there might be solutions for it already. So they just live with it. And the third type of uh, category was people who are aware of their problems and unmet needs and heard somewhere there might be a solution, but they have no clue where they can find it. So in our platform, we aim to like, accommodate for these three types of behaviors. So how we did it, we like, uh, crafted a very uh, simple conceptual structure, which starts from the more higher category of needs. And at the end, we had 10 needs that we started with, and this, they are related to the health and mental well-being, everyday activities, money and documentation, let's say, uh, and household, etc. So we are starting from the 10 categories, and each category has multiple sub-needs. So if you, your need is social contact, so, uh, sub-needs are support, finding company, finding intimacy, etc. And each of these sub-needs are related to goals that are actionable, that we can provide support. So if your sub-need is finding company, your goals could be finding someone to talk to, finding activities to do, to do together with your loved one, improving communication, etc. And after you find these goals, we match them with product categories. And these categories, let's say for the finding activities, uh, could be games, 
just getting a tandem bike, doing an interactive painting, Alzheimer core, yeah. etc. And so at the end, like we have 177 goals that we can support people with, and uh, also more than 2,000 cat product categories in our platform. Um, so what we did once we set up the structure and find, like completed the parts of from needs to goals with our user research, we also did this matching between product categories and um, these goals. And one thing I needed to say, actually, so I mentioned three types of behaviors. So if you really don't know what your need is, you start from the need category and sl slowly explore towards the product category that might help you. If you know what your problem is, but you don't know the solution, you enter from the goal level to our system. And if you know what you're looking for, you start with the product category, and then we give information about where you can find them. So this is how we structured it. So to match these products with the goals, we again did lots of sessions with the nurses and tried to fill all this uh, like a structure with content. And then we did lots of wireframing, how we can turn this content into a prototype that people work with. And initially we had three different like, ways of interaction. The first one you see on the left was more like an online questionnaire kind of a thing. You were putting check boxes in order to select needs, goals, etc. So it's very straightforward. It walks you through the end. The one that you see at the bottom, it was a card game that you sort out cards to identify the importance of certain needs for you. And the last one was like a web shop kind of a structure that you navigate through filtering uh, yeah, your way in the system. So we tested these prototypes with, again, nurses, with caregivers in some care homes, with people with dementia together with their informal caregivers, and try to understand what kind of decisions we took were like, accepted positively, and what kind of decisions we took were not understood very well. And we didn't do it to select one of the three concepts, but try to best get, select the best out of them to merge into one final concept. And uh, it is this one, the link actually works if you want to practice your Dutch, unfortunately, but I would be happy to uh, like walk you through afterwards. I'm also downstairs as a demo stand. I can show you, uh, but this is what it looks like right now and it is being used for a while in certain region of the Netherlands. But um, what we have learned from the testing, the first one was because many of our target group has cognitive deficiencies, providing them like a, a way to show them where they are in the system was very crucial because they were easily getting lost in the system. So in our final prototype, we tried to really make breadcrumbs very clear, make a verbal indication of where they are, and also give like a different color cues about where they are in the system. So if you start from the needs, everything is more or less greenish. If you start from the products, everything is more or less orangey. Uh, so we try to find out different ways to help them find their way. Other lessons that we have learned, we really have to minimize choice and complexity because as all of us are very much in overwhelmed by loss of choice, but especially our target group is very <laughs> affected by it. We have to, of course, keep the interaction style consistent. And scrolling was a very big issue. No one managed to scroll. So they really preferred very, like going page by page, like very straightforward, like front and back kind of interaction. So we made everything fit into one screen's worth. And also images were an issue for us. Uh, so we tried to keep the images uh, big and friendly and not stigmatizing. So we also tested all the illustrations we used with the people. And they really like, gave feedback about what are the issues that they can relate to and if they can recognize the images, what they are representing. So they were really very helpful to give feedback to us. And like these are some of the final images. Because the Netherlands is culturally very varied country, we also try to keep them varied, like try to include everyone in our images. And also the language, we really try to craft very well. So we try to make an empathetic and respectful, but very short and direct language because this was in one of our prototypes and we added quite some text to just to sound more empathetic. So we know that there are lots of problems, it is quite normal and uh, yeah, we would like to help you in that, so which one of these do you need help, etc. But everyone said this is really too much, just 
show me, okay, you have chosen for this, which one do you want to go for? Very short and direct. So this is more or less the design decisions we take. And I would like to add, end with a quote from a nurse. Uh, because nurses are very happy with this because they also don't know what exists in the market. And also they think that this tool really helps them to understand their client and explore their needs. So it is an aid for them as well, not just for the client. And they asked us to make cards like this for the needs. And they take it everywhere right now just to start a conversation with their clients. And I have more of them. If you are interested, please come find me. I can hand this out. And also, one of the uh, informal caregivers was saying that it is very good to see all the needs together. There are issues that you do not experience right now, but in the future you can encounter them. So you can prepare yourself. So it's not just about solving problems, but also in the long term, it helps you to reflect on your choices and be aware I'm sorry, about the impact of your disease on you so you can actually yeah. prepare yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you, you're on time. Yes. <laughs> uh, question? Please. Uh, there's always a great reticence for questions. Um, yeah, were you working with um, mild cognitive impairment or full dementia? Mild cognitive impairment, yeah, like mild stage of dementia. Yeah. We said that if it is more severe stages, we target the uh, informal caregiver in that case. Mm -hmm. They can still use it together, but it will be more in the hands of informal caregiver then. Yeah, yeah, I can believe that. It's import important to get people who can then project forward to where they might be. But I wondered, yeah, would it be interesting maybe to try uh, to do some analysis with some people with, you know, early onset and mid-term dementia, because you get very different disease progressions. Yeah. And, you know, some faculties stay with you and some don't. And you might get some individual differences there. Yes, actually this was one of the challenges we had because dementia, we cannot find any generalized solutions. Every patient is very unique. Uh, some people are very still good at, with memory, but time orientation is gone. The other person is completely different. You can really never be sure. Uh, so this is why we try to keep everything very simple as much as possible. And we are aware that after a certain stage, they won't be able to use it. Uh, yeah, but it is a nice idea to test out with the maybe mid-stage dementia. We didn't do it so far. Thanks. Nice Thank work. You. Thank you. Any more question? So I would rather interested on the thematic analysis of your of your design. So it, do you have the thematically you analyze whatever they have said, the patients and uh, like the caregivers. Uh, so do you have that? Any, any kind of this or plan you plan to do it? Uh, later? Uh, it is a very practical and applied project. Uh, so we didn't do any thematic analysis. We really approached them very practically. Okay, does it work yeah, or yeah. not? <laughs> and how we can improve it? Uh, so unfortunately, we don't have it. Uh -huh. But right now, because it has been being used really in real life and we are trying to track it and maybe from so now on we can do, yeah, more systematic analysis yeah, of the use, yeah. yeah. Because otherwise, like you get many informations, and then, then you cannot like uh, classify it, like how exactly. it could be happen. Yeah. Yeah. Be thank specifically you. Specifically, what he said, like a uh, like a uh, very early level or the mid level, how you can. So we can actually control uh, certain yeah. things. Like, yeah. <laughs> so thank those you. analysis are required. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Ah, thank you.